flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First thing that we need to do is the approval of minutes. And we have minutes here from uh, July 5th and July 17th. I'll make a motion to approve both minutes. I have a second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve both minutes. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Motion passed. and a second to approve all claims as presented. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. Uh, motion passed. Now we are ready for uh, custodian Keith Freeman. For another Keith. Um, so TK reached out to me um, about the final phase of modernization proposal for the elevator, which um, you guys have a copy um, page two and three gives the scope of work of what um, is to be done still for the three phases that was previously already approved, as in this was already pre-approved. Um, the question I have, and they presented to me, is the funding, um, because they would like to do this in conjunction with um, the jack that they're fixing as well, too. Right now, the jack is in fabrication uh, process right now, where they have, uh, they've been here four times just to Remeasure, make sure that they, everything's cut. Um, I still don't have an ETA of exactly when they're going to be on site installing it. Uh, I just know that they're still in the fabrication port. Uh, everything listed in here is um, everything from the controller um, to the cab, the hoist, updating the pit, um, and the car fixtures and hull fixtures, uh, which is everything that I have presented in the past, and you gentlemen have already. Approved. Um, I went to Beth uh, asking about this before I presented it um, and for the funding of it. So, current is total on this one for the final phase. Total $54,133 is the final. Phase of the elevator, elevator modernization. How much is it again? Fifty-four thousand one hundred thirty-three. Yeah, you were looking at different funds. Um, so, I'm, I refresh my memory on it was to get the elevator fixed. Over sixty, wasn't it? For all of it together? Well, for what they're doing now. That that was over 100. 102. Yeah. And we used 60 of this money to help pay for some of that funding. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. So we need another $54,133 to be appropriated to finish the phase work once it's completed and working on it. Correct. I just want to make sure I get that. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Okay. <coughs> and we can use that funding from that because there's over a hundred thousand in there, isn't there? For a little more. I did not work, but when we worked there would be enough to do what else Yeah, you were off, yeah, you were looking at different funding as well. Um overall you said yeah. different appropriations yes. out of that, if not transfer also. All together. Yeah, that it, was, it No, these are different entity um, that has to be repaired or replaced, like a lot of the cab stuff. The biggest thing is the controller unit, which right now is the 
field style relays that push relays and that operate. That's that's the biggest portion of it all. Um, with the elevator being down right now, it's a perfect time for them to come in and change out that control unit. Everything else is just um, bringing up the bar, like the inside of the cab, um, the fixtures, the buttons, um, redoing the pit area, bringing it up to modern, make sure all the springs are good, and stuff like that. Uh, nothing that would hinder timeline if they started on this and Jack was prepared, ready to go. The transfer of the funds if it's not in the courthouse renovation. Correct. Um, and it had been pushed back from other reasons, and especially with the jack going down, and uh, they kind of pushed it back. But with the jack being down, it gives them prime time to come in. Place that control unit. Um, and wait, don't stop. Oh, correct. So that way, when yeah. one's done, both oh, done. Yeah. Good to go. Is there a warning on this for? Is there any? What's there? Yeah, on page five, um, uh, bullet point number three starts the warranty. But also they have additional warranty work because we retain them as uh, service to our elevator. So anything that fits underneath the initial proposal for service um, that's not covered in here will be covered underneath their other uh, contract that we have with them as service. already accepted this, but you just wanted permission to go ahead and do it, correct? Correct. Because the way we had to move around for funding, because the tech went down, I had to get with Beth to make sure that I actually had the funding to still go move forward with this. Yeah, they, want, they just want to come in early, because it, since it's out of service anyway, uh -oh. they can do this. Well, the thing is, the courthouse elevator has You also have an ADA compliance of 25,000, and that could, could be used too because we need the elevator. So that's where we got the So we have another 51, I believe, is what we created. Yeah, 
8700 is from what account? The courthouse elevator. That's just my elevator account, okay. And 90 for the renovation. 90? Send the original motion and make a new motion that we use what's left in the elevator modernization, the 90,000 out of the courthouse, and the 25,088 to give us enough money to pay for this renovation. So I have a motion and a second. Contract for the community crossings, the state and the local. Um, I would have to get copy of that or not, but I have copies in here. No, I sent you the other day and forwarded that email for. Um, no, it's in the um, But I have, uh, yeah, I have the signed copies. Um, I give Beth the, the, um, the original sign. Contract for the um, for us and the contractor to do the payment. I left it up here for, for you. For my time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's what this is. Yeah. Who is the? Yeah. Because I was just asking. Asking. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you guys need a copy or not, but I have copies in here. Um, and the only other thing I was going to address was. Um, Farmers closing roads to do manure. Wait a minute, say that again. Farmers closing roads to put their uh, hose across. Yeah. The farm. I, I don't think we need to be closing roads for that. Um, they need to put a culvert pipe underneath the road to run through there. So closing like we talked about? Yeah. So how do you want them to do it? I would put a culvert pipe underneath the road and they would run it through, through the pipe. Instead of closing the road down completely. Mm -hmm. Last year I had phone calls about it outside of Camden where um, they closed one of the well traveled county roads, can't remember the name of it, but it messed with the mail route, it messed with the school bus route that Carroll and Delphi had to go through there and they had to change their routes. And, and I was hoping they could get an ordinance to, to do that. And make some pay for the permit to cut the road. Fix the road and yeah. uh, put, put the pipe down. Who do you get by executive order? So, yeah. You can do it by executive order. Okay. Yeah. 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 It does not have to be an ordinance. It does not have to be an ordinance. Let me make sure that I'm understanding you. Right now, they, what's the situation now? How do they do it now? They, when they go from the barn to a field, yeah. And it's not far enough to truck it. 
They just take the pipe or the hose and run across the road and close the road. Well, on top of the road? Yeah. Oh. So we was wanted to put, make them put a culvert pipe underneath to run it through the pipe instead of over the road. You know, That's going to close the road too, though, isn't it? When they yeah. cut? Well, when they, when like they do, do the pipe, yeah. Then this one closes it for just maybe two or three hours yeah. to put, put the pipe in so they can run their hose underneath it. Versus all day or two or three days. I, yeah, well, I, I didn't realize any of our ruts just running the hose across the top of the, uh, the county Is it road still place. just one outside Camden still? Uh, no, this one was um, down in the southern part of the county. Okay. We've had three or four people call in and want to close the road, and, and we usually tell them no. Um, we have let a couple, but we would like to end on that. There was a permit process to close the road too. Mm -hmm. Was there a cost with that? I think twenty-five bucks. Well, what about the McCarran Road? Yeah. Um, I was going to put in there that um, they they need to um, keep it maintained until they get the top layer on it, and then we can we can maintain it after that. But they need to put it back to where where it was when they. Uh, See, I don't know any of them that really do, because you can always tell when you drive down the road, come on, you hit one of these, yeah. where they hit. Yeah. I think, I think um, our culvert crew should be the one putting in that pipe and the farmer pays for it to have that done. That way we know what's done under our standards, and we know it's going to be sustainable underneath it, because they can dig it out and just get dirt. And then you put that pipe in and throw rock on top of it, and they come by and patch it, but it's still not going to be solid. We're still going to have issues. And if you guys do it, I think it'll be more controlled. I do too. I think that's a good suggestion. If you know, a pipe, I mean, get a type of pipe, you just say tile. Once it's in and, and done, then we will we'll patch it or whatever we need. It's probably about a 10 inch pipe that goes in here because I think their hoses are six to eight. Yeah, I think it's, um, I talked to a guy from White County and he said, he said like a 13. He said put a 13 in there, there's plenty of room. 13 or 15 or something like that. I think, uh, I think we need to, um, I think it's a good idea, but I think you need to come up with us with what it's going to cost before we just throw this in there and make a lot of farmers upset. Okay. And you have that done by the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Figure out what it's going to cost to get the pipe, a standard, whatever size you think is going to work, and then the materials to fix the road. Okay. Are we going to do one size, one length of pipe? one diameter of pipe for every application? I would say yes. Because most are under the same length. There is anyway. There are two or three Pretty feet. close to the same. Yeah. Most of them. There's some gravel roads in there a little bit. Most of the roads that are being closed are ones that are highly graveled anyway. And this way you know when to call the Sheriff's Department to let the emergency service know Hey, this road's going to be down for six hours for us to do this work, then it will be reopened at the end of the day. Yeah, the I only, think that's the safest bet. Yeah, yeah. The, only, the only thing with us doing is we'll have to make sure we have, like if we're doing other pipes and stuff, we'll have to make sure we get, you know, get it done instead of 
It's to have them there before we go out to work. So you'll have to order in some extra pieces of this pipe to have them on hand, probably? Yeah. Well, there's a new tile company that came back in. Someone bought out the tile company on the floor and moved it to Burners. Oh, really? Or, uh, Burlington. Okay. I didn't know if you heard that or not. I, I heard somebody bought it, but I didn't yeah. hear it was moving. I want to thank you for getting those trees removed down there at the parking lot. You're welcome. Um, the sheriff was going through his old inventory. The cars were parked down there. He'd be getting them stripped and ready for sale for auction or trade in. And uh, here? Yeah. They, were, um, they weren't they were white in them. They were black from something underneath that tree. And it took him forever to get them clean. When he told me that, I just called over and asked him to have that. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, by the trash transfer station where you've got the piles of rocks and everything out here, mm -hmm. uh, there's a roadway that's been pretty significant roadway built going back in there. What's that for? We're, um, the whole plan when we got that was to fill a lot of that in and, and then put like stone, more stone and whatever back in there. Or, or um, source and stuff that we don't have room for over there. And kind of like a staging area? Yeah, that's, he's going to fill all that up and, and um, use that for that. Okay. How about, uh, have you heard any more about the excess dirt from the jail site? I haven't heard any more. Um, I know, um, I think it was going to wait and fill the project was done to get rid of it. Let's see what they needed, and then whatever we get from that, well, that's part of where it goes. We can haul it ourselves out cheaper than having them haul it out. Right. Right now, I mean, the, the thing that they came to me saying was that they would load it if we wanted to right. use that's our been, trucks. Right. That's all been put on hold for right now. What, yeah. Okay, but if we put it off to the end, do we have to put our loader over there, and is that a big deal? No, I mean, when we get to where we can do it, we can, when we can do that, we have to. Bring the big loader from north down here? Yeah, or when we got to south or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you know, by then we might have one there for a while anyway, so might already have one there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ready to deliver it, but they want um, they want money when they get when they bring it. So can you put that in your budget? Yeah. Kind of narrow-minded of them, but money out of this. 
and then they, I just found out about it like the day, the day before we they split the plane. Okay, so Beth, we're going to approve this early, do we? Approve it early, and then we can write the check today. There's no handwriting. Why they why they wait until the day before? Well, they have to get the check they just um, that way we don't use it and something happens there well we're using it while we're waiting and get the money. It's more for the highway when they bought it pickup truck. We want the money when it comes to the over. This is from Michigan Cat. Going through the caliser, I Well, that's what I was wondering about. Yeah. It's probably just a building station. Yeah, okay, so we're actually getting it from the caliser. Yeah. The transfer, are they transfer of it? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Got one sitting up there, so yeah. Okay, well, I'd entertain a motion, gentlemen, if you want to do that. How much is it? $138,553. and a second uh, to approve payment of $108,553 even uh, for our new road grade. What do they give us on the old one? And they give 40, 40 for one and 25 for the other. Good. So you're creating two in on one. Two problem counts for a new one. Yeah, for a new one. A new or one, is it not brand new? It's a, no, it's a 15, but it's got a lot less hours. This is a 15? Is it? Yeah. yeah. I recently saw the one at the Tippecanoe County had just bought. What a beautiful piece of equipment. Does everything, but besides the back of the driver. <laughs> Yeah, it'll look similar to theirs. Okay, so I call for a vote. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. So you have to be retraining all this new equipment because it's not the old lever system anymore. It's all push button. Yeah, it's, it's all joysticks. Is instead, it? Instead of steering wheel and the lever, it's all the joysticks. Saying we're going to get a lot of snow. But I'm just counting on it. I'd rather not. Yeah. We're due. Yeah. It's getting close. Number 
motion, gentlemen. Motion to approve that. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. We all three sign this one too. state's program that uh, is called ready uh, commissioner brown you may remember last year we went through this uh, program r-e-a-d-i they call it ready it has an initiative it's an acronym basically the, the indiana general assembly uh, funded the state economic development corporation with 500 million dollars uh, in appropriations to fund communities for projects um, and that was ready 1.0 and we participated in that we did a letter of interest and a, a memorandum of understanding uh, and we were able to work through that process now it, as i think we remember a little bit tedious in the fact that we weren't sure how these regional initiatives go a lot of the money gets absorbed by larger organizations and, and tends to be uh, really gone before we get a chance to use it for projects uh, and last year was a little bit different we advocated uh, and ended up securing some matching funds out of the out of the 500 million that was allocated for the state. 30 million came to the Greater Lafayette area for the five counties, and then Carroll County was able to secure about two and a half million dollars of that in matching funds. Uh, 1.4 of that, well, 1.5 of that was for the city of Delphi. They matched the 1.5 million for their downtown apartment project, um, and then they also secured some matching funds for the trail. For a trail project that's going through i think that had to do with the uh the old 25 bridge and the trail underneath i think lauren you had some conversations on that uh bottom line is there, there's going to be money available for local communities to match and uh, i think we should probably participate in the, the next round of this funding because we're starting to see uh, a great deal of interest and activity and investment in this community and their sole focus for that is are those matching funds um, so with the LOI that you have is basically letting uh, Greater Lafayette Commerce, the fiduciary for the, the regional project, know that you are that we are intending on participating in this next round of funding, uh, and then that will allow us as the EDC to go negotiate the, the memorandum of understanding with them on kind of like what it's going to look like, uh, who's going to be in control, uh, how the voting process goes. So this is really just step one in letting them know that we want to participate. Uh, and then it allows us to move on to that. So uh, it looks like they're going to have $500 million again. The Indiana General Assembly did appropriate another round of funds here in the last um, annual budget. And so right now we're just trying to tee up what the region looks like, how many counties are going to participate. Uh, I will say um, that the Ready 1.0 process was the first time I've seen all six counties in this region actually come to the table and work together. Uh, it wasn't always pretty let's put it that way because we all have our own initiatives our own uh, objectives and so um, but to be able to sit around the table with all the mayors and the six <coughs> region the com commissioners in the room the economic development organization kind of just hash out purdue lafayette um, it, it was really a, a really good process to go through and i think we're going to better refine that here for 2.0 so Jim, did you see yes i have it's good they, they will have a, a commissioner appointment for the regional board of representatives. So how we've been structured in the past is we have a commissioner. Uh, originally, it just ha it had to be a commissioner. It could be an appointment of uh, an economic development organization, which we represented the county, Delphi, Florida, Camden, Burlington, um, and then a mayor of one of the towns or cities. And so Mayor Worling and myself and Commissioner Brown were the three that were kind of the, the three parties in that. So they are going to allow for appointments. So if the commissioner can't make it or a mayor can't make it, that they can appoint someone um, to be a voice for them. So I think there'll be about 22 votes, 23 votes total in the region, which is pretty. Uh, that'll be ranging from Purdue uh, to Mayor Wazorski to Mayor Barton Crawfordsville, Mayor 
roads and obviously the commissioners surrounding so. Where did you all meet? Yeah, so Greater Lafayette Commerce, downtown Lafayette. It's big enough room for all It is, it, it's packed. Um, but just, it's really, it's the first time we'd all sat down together to talk about our needs, wants, and desires, to hear what Crawfordsville wants to do and what, what they want to do in Warren and Benton County and how White County and, and how do you get a pool of funds together and be able to, to jockey through priorities. And, um, and so it's just advocating for Carroll County, Delphi, Flora, Camden, Burlington. Um, and so I think this is going to allow us to do that in round two. Um, and we do have some, some developers interested in doing some housing in, the, in the, the northern part of the county. And so we would look to, to see how we can match ready funds for that project. I know we've got a housing project likely for Delphi, a single family home project, Flora as well. I'm like we're getting about 250 homes here in Carroll County. Um, I've not heard. They, I mean, we, we have been on it. I say we in a sense. Carroll County has pulled more single family home permits in the last 24 months than they have in a long time. And, and so we're, we're obviously seeing the market do what it needs to do. And so we're starting to see the developers now come to the table and say, can we do this in a, a, a planned unit development instead of just the sporadic farm kind of farming disruptive rural landscape? So uh, I think we can, with, if we're participating in Ready 2.0, we can certainly leverage it for housing projects, senior housing projects. With that throughout the county, um, it brings Flora, Burlington, and Camden to the table. Um, so I think it'll be a good, and we're doing a shell building too, which we're still negotiating how, if the county does a shell building, invest, you know, three, five million dollars for a shell building if the RDC and, and and you guys and the council all decide that's what you want to do for a shell building. Can we leverage that for a match and bring five million dollars in? Um, I, we don't really have a plan for what that would be for. Maybe it's recruiting a company. Maybe it's working with some of the, the employers in Mafiat and Kokomo to see if they've got suppliers that would be willing to come to the table. So there's a, there's a, I was just using that as an example, but I think that there's a multitude of ways we can leverage these state dollars because if we don't get to them, somebody else will and they will be used. So it's it's kind of push your way to the table and, uh, and advocate. So it's likely the city of Delphi will leverage these ready dollars. Uh, and so they, they submitted their own letter of in intent independently, and that's the way it's set up anyway. So Covington, Attica, Monticello, they all submitted their own. So even if we didn't participate, the city of Delphi is likely to. Um, but we're, we're, our goal is that uh, this would represent Flora, Camden, Burlington as well, in case they have, they want the ability to participate in this. And so it doesn't have to be millions. If, if Flora wants to do a housing project and they've got hundred thousand dollars they want to put towards a match just like community crossings then we could go get them that matching dollar for dollar so this is uh, we're not every project doesn't have to be big and flashy if it's something a community wants to, to work on that's a public infrastructure project um, then we can go get the dollar for dollar match for them and then, so so how does this help the rural towns or the rural community besides just the small towns yeah I think the unincorporated is um, this this would probably be right up their alley. So any of the unincorporated that, that the county invests in. So if if, if the developer wanted to build near Greenhurst, uh, for example, south south of Flora, if they wanted to build a subdivision or build housing south of Flora uh, in Greenhurst, then that would be a county project because obviously Flora is not going to give tax dollars to support a uh, an infrastructure pro or a housing project south of there. So that that would be where we would come to the board board and and ask them to support that project and, and then we'd have to see what the numbers were. Adrian, I like this one, but let me just ask a few questions. Yes, sir. Um, let's say Rockfield, okay? What what would they qualify for? What, or what type of projects could they do? So since it's unincorporated, it would, it would likely fall under uh, the Board of Commissioners or, right. or anything. So what could we do for, for Rockfield? Yeah, so um, the idea of the state matching funds is that as long as it fits the plan, the regional development plan, which will be housing, infrastructure, I mean, there's, there's a multitude of things, but 
uh, if there was an infrastructure project that you wanted to do in Rockfield, whether it was like sanitary sewers or I'll use an example uh, to support housing growth over there, then if you made an investment of two hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand, or we use edit or whatever the, the council's desire for funds, then we would be with this program be able to submit that to the state for a one to one dollar match. So we would double our money immediately on the investment. So like Rockfield needed to upgrade Burroughs needs a sewer system. I'm pretty sure it's going to come sooner than later. Yeah. But I don't know. Every every roughly every client will be going to eventually get hit by this. Yeah. We want to be prepared to help them, I guess. So it's likely that this program, and I'm speaking way ahead, but I think this program is going to continue. It's likely going to continue beyond ready its name and its format. So CCMG, the Community Crossings Matching Grant, became a uh, it got birthed out of NDOT as a 80-20 match, and it, it's, it's actually created more public investment in roads than ever in the history of the state of Indiana because communities are realizing that they can now leverage their dollar. And so what they're trying to do, what I believe they're trying to do, is take economic <coughs> development kind of to that next level to where communities can start using edit and, and economic development resources to go match them to bring projects and pull them through. So. Projects we normally wouldn't be able to compete for, if we've got a one-to-one -one match, it, it makes it a lot more lucrative for us to be able to compete uh, than, than most of the larger communities that are just writing checks and uh, kind of spending frivolously. So this allows us to kind of plan and then not get the matching funds uh, for it. So yeah, I, I think it could be for an infrastructure project if, if that's what the if, if that's what you desire. I, nothing's there is a there is a scope. In the, redevelop in the regional plan that allows us to, to limit what we can do, but it's not. Okay. If it's infrastructure, it's likely going to be supported. So. Would this include street improvements? Yes, yes. So, yeah, we, we do. I mean, we currently have discussed with a developer about a project on, on 900 North, uh, senior housing, some single family homes. Um, so, like, if we if, if we came to that project came to fruition, then it would likely be us bringing a letter of intent saying that if they do the project, here's the investment amount. We're asking the county to upgrade this county road, and then all those funds that are done on that county road could be applied for the 100% match grant for the project. So, if it costs us a million dollars to do that road, then we could go get another million dollars for the, pro the project in whole. For that area, so you can, and then we can negotiate. That would all be negotiations at this point. So, um, so yeah. You, so you turn a one million dollar project into a one dollar one million dollar commitment. This is all hypothetical, right? Um, uh, one million dollar investment from the county into fourteen new homes, twenty new senior family units, um, and then we also bring another million dollars from the state, and that would likely be for the developer to use for his infrastructure on his project. And that's a million dollars in his performance that he didn't have before. Um, that, that makes the project work. Um, so that would be a, an example of what we could do uh, with the project. So, okay. Hope that helps. Sorry, it was a lot of hypotheticals there. Right. Right. Um, well, it sounds like it's a, it's, it, if we don't get into it, we'll be behind on everything else. Well, we'll just see a bunch of press releases and money going elsewhere. And, and uh, I mean, we did contribute. I would say that we did vote for the, uh, they just made an announcement about the airport expansion. If you're familiar with the, they, that article just came out, I think, yesterday or this weekend. Uh, we were part of that airport expansion, so we did vote to fund um, some of the regional dollars for the airport. So we'll have here. Yeah, no, the Purdue Airport. Oh, the Purdue Airport. Okay. So, so they're, they will have commercial air out of the airport here soon. Right. Um, and then uh, the, the Skywater project, the 1,700 jobs, the $1.7 billion investment at Purdue, the, the semiconductor manufacturer, we also voted to fund them <coughs> for training uh, out of the regional funds. So those are, pro those are big, big projects that we all coalesced around. Um, but I think Ready 2.0 is going to be less pie in the sky and more like the Main Street, uh, Carroll County, than, than these large projects that we've traditionally seen. At least that's what we're going to get into. 